prior to the RIRs on December 28, 1997. Those who received such resources can be LACNIC members if they request further resources and pay their membership fees. Now, there might be cases of those who receive legacy resources that haven't signed the membership contract nor pay fees, but do receive certain subsidized services subsidized by the membership. It is the role of the board to establish an alternative fee to the membership to receive these services. The board can determine that fee, as has been the case in APNIC. What the community may decide is that at least these legacy legacy resources are used in something that is of benefit for the community. And if these resources are not being used and announced, or if the WHOIS data have not been updated and can be contacted for the security of the entire community, they can then be recovered. In this way, we prevent having resources that might, A, not being used, for example, the organizations that received these have disappeared or the person in charge are managing them or they no longer need them partially or totally. B, they might be used maliciously or even without the consent of the original receivers. C, they might have outdated contacts, which makes it difficult or prevents solving cases of abuse. And it is possible that even some of these organizations are unaware that they have such resources. Even, and, and this would be beneficial for LACNIC and for them to know this if they are contacted and informed about this. Quite obviously, there is no text in the current policy manual and the text that I am proposing would be section 7.6 of the manual management of legacy resources, which would state legacy resources can continue receiving LACNIC services in the conditions determined by the board, provided they are announced and used. They, uh, reverse, they have reverse resolution register. They are maintained up to date, and they have updated information on the allocations and distributions in the who is space of LACNIX or the NIRs. So as from this ratification date, LACNIC could begin a transition period over a one-year period to contact all the organizations with legacy resources and inform them about the need to comply with this, offering them, offering this association with the different possibilities to be indicated by the board in order to maintain these services. For example, they no longer wish to be members that wish to continue receiving these services for a lower fee, for example. And once this period has elapsed, if the previous points are not complied with, the board might decide whether certain services are no longer provided or could also enable recovery procedures. For example, those entities that no longer are exists, the resources are not used at all. For piracy purposes, I insist once again, these are things that are happening. An important information, this proposal arises because, if I'm not mistaken, three years ago, APNIC reported a situation and asked the community to make a proposal to solve this. I submit a proposal. And finally, I was asked to lay the proposal because they want the board wished to make a decision and to please submit your proposal later on. This is information from the latest AP NIC from February this year, reporting that there were a total number of 3,303 cases equivalent to seven. 0.3 million IPv4 addresses that from these more than half have been updated, 4.7 million IP addresses. They were records that were no longer in conditions and 2.4 million addresses were recovered 
furthermore, there are some pending cases from those 193,000 IPs, IP addresses. Some might yet be recovered. So the community once again receives 2.5 million addresses. It is quite true that the amount of legacy resources that APNIC had was much bigger than the one we have here. But if we do something similar here, I think this would be relevant and important because there is a waiting list of seven years. And if we at least figure out a solution of that waiting list, even if it takes one year, I think this would be positive for the community. I have copied here the slide of AP NIC from which I obtained this information. And if I'm not mistaken, this would be the last slide. Thank you, Jordi. This proposal still does not have an impact analysis. So now open the discussion stage. We invite you to share your doubts, questions, and comments in the two microphones we have in the room. Let me remind you to please state your name and the and your organization. And if you are in the Zoom session, please send us your questions or also raise your hand to use a microphone. Oscar Robles from LACNIC. So let us be cautious with these uh, uh, issues. So we have to be cautious what we say because removed uh, resources are not the same as recovered addresses or also assigned resources. So these two IP addresses have been labeled. The who is no longer states that the holder is an entity, but these are in the hands of APNIC. But these haven't been reassigned. This is because they have sufficient IPv4 resources, and it is not envisaged that they will have to assign these soon. But the problem is that many of these addresses are used in private networks or also for other reasons. And we yet do not know what the consequences could be of this recovery. Therefore, much as is a case of APD, would like to ask you for some recommendation once we have an idea of what we can do. Now, what we note for the time being is that as soon as, as they start assigning addresses from this address pool and that there are no consequences, we will then be able to determine the level of risk of this measure. Now, if there are no risks or if there are minor risks, of course, we're going to request a process. But I think this is a too early stage to think that they already have 2 million addresses available, and this could then be replicated in this region. What you say is quite true. That is why I say not assigned but recovered, because these addresses are in quarantine. But these could then be assigned as soon as this becomes necessary because the one year period established by the board has already elapsed. So there are no longer chances for those who did not claim these can now do so. This would be the case of 193 addresses. Ricardo? Ricardo Patara? I regret to say that I am against this proposal. We have an assumption of a problem, but this isn't specific. How many organizations have this situation? It is assumed that these are used for malicious purposes, but are there specific facts stating this? Or you assume that the organizations have disappeared. Do we have information to support that? There are many assumptions, but we don't know whether the problem exists. One of the considerations is that they don't pay, but they use the services. But it's probable that these are a very limited number of cases. And the services are there. This does not affect the members. I see no member here complaining that the fees they pay for a service is used by someone else that does not pay for that service. I haven't seen none of the members saying I oh, was doing that here. So I'm against this proposal. And what I'm concerned about, too, is the cost that that 
might imply, namely contacting everyone to maybe recover or have a very limited increase in the number of addresses. I think this is not a problem, and I would be against that. Ricardo, I understand your point of view. If we recover 10,000 or 100,000 or 1 million addresses, whatever, I think it is always worthwhile. Now, I cannot give you data specifically. I haven't conducted a research, but I base myself on an equivalent case in APNIC. I understand the, these are not 7.4 million addresses that you might have at LACNIC. But even if it's 1%, I think it's worthwhile. The way this proposal is drafted, gra drafted this does not become mandatory. This just sets the basis to do so the board can proceed if they wish. But we approve this so that it can be done in the future. And like Oscar said, they are trying to tap the community to determine whether this can be done or not. I think this allows us to be prepared in the event of such a situation. What occurred at APNIC was quite the opposite. I submitted the proposal. The board said, no, wait. And once the board approved, approved this resolution, they could recover these addresses but couldn't assign them. And what I seek is precisely the opposite. If it is decided to recover the addresses, they can be assigned right away after the quarantine period. Allow me a very brief answer. This data is from APNIC, and this is quite different. Each region has its own features, so we have to really focus on what is typical for this region. The impact analysis could, for example, show that those data. Edmundo Casares from Mexico. I'm against this proposal in Mexico. We have legacy resources. Most of these are for educational institutions. And I can say firsthand that these don't consume anything in terms of activity or services of LACNIC that they might be using. So I'm also against because I think that going against legacy resources is trying to force them to do something that dates back prior to the existence of LACNIC. So I don't think that we should do something that should be retroactive to something that occurred such a long time ago. It's not about that, but to offer an alternative contract but not with the same obligations as for the members. So, in fact, in Mexico, we have cases of universities to whom we have assigned resources and they have accepted the agreement, uh, services agreement, and they now pay for fees. But there are other organizations that have sought us to convert. So I don't think that including a policy that involves looking up and seeing where they are, I don't think that would be correct. So that is not what the policy is proposing. It gives the board the role of doing so. Good afternoon. Thank you, Gonzalo Navarro. Speaking on my own behalf, I have some concerns, Jordi, about this policy. It is one thing to try to recover. I mean, Oscar said that they are stationary, but which attribution, for example, any or I are not even like Nick alone could reassign IPv4 addresses that ha were initially assigned by another entity um, or a different regulatory framework. I don't know if LACNIC or any other or IR could reassign addresses. I agree with Oscar. If this were to move forward, we need not even across the R IRs, there are other institutions involved like Guyana. So we need to have a conversation on this. I think it is quite early to even 
discuss it, as Ricardo said, since we don't have actual data to have a general idea of what this is, we should be very cautious, like Oscar said. I would agree with what you're saying, but we do have another experience. We have APNIC. For now, I'm against. Arturo Servin Google, I am against the proposal, the policy proposal. And I was going to ask the same thing. How many resources or what is the magnitude of the problem that we are discussing? I don't just work at Google, but I'm an engineer. I like numbers. I like to make decisions based on numbers. You said you have no idea how many resources these are. And so again, I think that we are not addressing an actual problem. We don't even know if that problem is a problem. And Mundo said that this is not a problem in Mexico. Jordi, I would ask of you before you come here and you have us all waste time, make sure you research into whether this is really a problem or not. If that is the case, you can submit a proposal for an actual problem and you can submit a solution. Now, if you're here, you stand in front of us and you want, you're saying that you have no idea what you're trying to solve and you don't even know if that is a problem. I'm sorry, I make it as waste your time. Those are the conclusions, Arturo, of the impact assessment. No, Dory, you are proposing to solve a problem and you have no idea the magnitude of the problem that you're trying to resolve. That is not professional at all. Even if it's only 1,000 addresses, I believe it's worthwhile. If the community doesn't think it's worthwhile, well, that is a decision for the community to make. If we're speaking about 10, 10,000 addresses, that makes no sense. LACNIC staff has to invest money, has to do a lot of things, and it's not worthwhile. If this is hundreds or thousands, not worthwhile. If these were millions of addresses, well, maybe it would. Well, we'll have to agree to disagree. Next question. Luciano Minuchin from Argentina. I am against the proposal. In the first place, I think the legacy resources is rather a complex topic affecting all RIRs. But as Arturo said, statistics and figures are important. How many organizations, how many IPs are we talking about? Many of these organizations are also members because they pay for other registries. So the number of organizations that are not paying anything, well, that is rare. There's a VPN, there's an ASN, there's something. I mean, they use service and they pay for something else. And if they're paying, well, the costs are rather low and that will not affect. I understand that most of them are end users, the ones that are involved in this process, because ISPs are in use or being used. So I think that we need statistics and we need numbers for the discussion. First of all, to really understand what it is that we are speaking about. And then, well, there are other legal aspects that are maybe more complex and we have to see whether there is potential for further action. Oscar, the board knows the figures, the numbers, we've done the study and we've done an impact assessment. We don't yet know the cost of carrying out a process of this nature. We can assume what the benefit would be, but we don't have the other side of the equation, the cost, so the staff that is needed to reach out to these entities over the course of one or two years. We also need to consider the consequences of any mistakes or of any inaccuracies. We're speaking about bands, bandwidths as a small organization. We cannot sustain a significant bandwidth with 
the demands that we might have. So, of course, it is complicated to manage such a number of public policy proposals. So, you can just imagine the demands over any inaccuracies. The board knows the figures. The board assesses whether the risk is uh, worthwhile or not. Jordi, it would not be your decision. It would be the decision of someone that understands the entire. Uh, I agree with you. The proposal is not part of that decision. If there are no further questions or, or comments, we thank the author for his presentation. Thank you. We are now going to measure room temperature. So can we we can consider it for consensus. Let me just remind everyone that although Zoom says that you have to vote, we are not voting here. Basically, we are just considering the temperature of the room. LACNIC staff will help us count. Please raise your hand if you are in favor of this proposal. Please raise your hand if you are against the proposal. Please keep your hands up for a minute. You can put your hand down. Thank you. And please raise your hand if you abstain. So, legacy resource management will aid a it's a weak initial discussion period on June 8, 2024. So, after two weeks after that, moderators or chairs will tell the community if the proposals reached consensus. So, we encourage everyone to follow the discussion on the policy list. Now, LACNIC staff will do a presentation on a framework for definitions for policy submission for